Today, the governor and state leaders representing the people of color and indigenous caucus made a call to reform laws they say will support racial justice. The call comes in the aftermath of the unrest in the wake of George Floyd's death. Esme Murphy joins us now from St. Paul. Hi, Esme. Hi there, Amelia and Frank. Well, of course, there have been calls for reform of police in Minnesota and, of course, in Minneapolis for decades now, but not quite like this. This was the governor coming together with key legislators saying the time for change is now. We all know that not all cops are bad, but we also know that not all cops are good. The changes being called for involve changes in specific Minnesota laws that would fundamentally change when police officers can use force and how they can lose their jobs. It's something these legislators have been talking publicly about since the killing of George Floyd. The unrest that left some Twin Cities neighborhoods in piles of rubble has seared an urgency into legislators of color. It's 2020. If you're not going to listen to us today, you're never going to listen to us. In the aftermath of the death of George Floyd, they are calling for changing state law on when police can use deadly force. Representative Carlos Mariani is the chair of the House Public Safety Committee. Minnesota should adopt principles and ethics for police officers' use of force practices that are centered on advancing human rights and that rely on standards of reasonableness as opposed to relying only on the subjective judgment of each individual officer. These legislators want the Minnesota Attorney General in charge of police use of deadly force incidents, not county attorneys. And they want to provide new power to the Minnesota Post Board, which controls the licensing of peace officers, but has little power to enforce firings. It has lain dormant and largely unresponsive. The reforms could include a statewide ban on police chokeholds, a ban Minneapolis just enacted, as well as administrative reforms that would affect all police departments, but clearly are aimed at reining in Minneapolis. What we're hearing uh, all throughout this week is a call precisely for a redesign of particularly that police department, that governmental entity. The police who represent us in Minneapolis come from outside. Lawmakers are also expected to push for laws that at minimum provide incentives for police to live in the city they work in. May 2020 figures show that just 7% of Minneapolis cops live in the city. Now, while these proposed changes by DFL legislators are sweeping, there is definitely going to be opposition when we get to that special session, which happens just tomorrow. Senator Paul Gazelka, the Republican leader of the Senate, says he wants to make sure that if there are changes, things move cautiously and slowly. The governor has said he's willing to let this special session run for as long as it takes to get these reforms enacted, Amelia. Esme, are there provisions that are more likely to have support? Well, you know, Amelia, I think there are a couple of things that do have bipartisan support. First, the call for the attorney general to take over deadly force cases involving police. The county attorneys association statewide supports that. So that certainly is bipartisan. And also the call to beef up the post board. It's a little known agency, but it controls the licensing of all police officers. There could be bipartisan support to make that post board have more effectiveness in training. All right. Thank you, Esme.